Kelly's court is back in session on the docket today, a powerful case about adoption and parental rights. This baby girl is at the center of the controversy. Look at this child. She's now 21 months old. A Utah couple adopted her at birth. But now a judge has ruled that they have to give her back to her biological father within the next 60 days. She's never known him. She's only known them as her parents. Her biological dad is an army drill sergeant, and he claims his then wife put this child up for adoption without his knowledge, without his consent, while he was away on duty at a South Carolina base. She just made the decision not to let me be a father and went behind my back, deceived me, and gave my child up for adoption. Joining me now to discuss it, Arthur Idala is a former prosecutor, now defense attorney. Jonas Bilbour has the same pedigree. Welcome, panel. So the judge was really outraged and said, there's no question in my mind, this baby girl goes back to the biological father and too bad on the adoptive parents. I, I want to start, let's just, without, I mean, let's just walk the viewers through it. John, let me start with you. Mm -hmm. How did the baby get born and, and taken away from the father without him knowing about it or doing anything about it? Father and mother were married. And the father decided to, in, in the course of the, of the marriage, they got pregnant, the father went to South Carolina for work. He's in the Army. The mother decided to stay behind. Were they having marital problems? Yes, they were. But for the last four months of the pregnancy, the mother cut the father completely out of the picture, would not communicate with him. And when he tried to get information about, hey, when's my baby being born, the hospital, because of HIPAA laws, wouldn't give him any information. That's what allowed the mother to... Uh, to um, concoct this adoption without his knowledge. So meantime, the mother who is down in Texas, Arthur, contacts this Utah adoption agency and says, I want to give the baby up for adoption. They find a couple that wants to adopt the baby, but she misled the adoption agency, right. correct, about correct. the father's wishes. They said he, he basically what the paperwork says is he abandoned the child, mm -hmm. which is just, according to the dad, is an absolute lie. Um, my heart breaks for these parents because what happened is they the agency approves the adoption if there's any culpability here it may be with the agency not following through with did this father really abandon this child i mean is it that simple can a woman just go and say i'm giving this child up and and there's no okay, due but, diligence but as to where heart, is my that my heart would be with the adoptive couple as well, Arthur. They, I would be with them as well in terms of empathy, at least. Empathy, that's what I'm but, speaking about. But the reporting is that this adoption agency informed the adoptive parents that the biological father did not know his daughter had been placed for adoption, and it was likely that he would contest the placement, and they proceeded to take the child anyway. Isn't that ball game? Well, I, no, I don't think it's ball game. Ball game meaning it's an easy meaning it's an easy decision. I don't think it's an easy decision. There was information given to the parents about this um, abandonment claim, and yes, they rolled the dice. I don't think that's ball game. I don't think it's automatic, um, and, and it's an argument can be made. You know, the best interest of the child is the standard. This child now is almost two years old. Cognitive reasoning is going on. She's raised that these oh, this is a parent. I hate to think. And now it's going to disappear. I, mean, I, have, I have an almost 20-month-old you know. at home, mm -hmm. and the thought of her being taken away <sighs> and given to another you know, set of parents, or in this case, a single dad, who she never knew. I mean, Jana, does the analysis shift, even if the adoptive couple has some culpability? Or, you know, I mean, they didn't, I don't know, they, they had some warning. Yeah, they had some knowledge. Does it shift now that this girl is almost two years old? Well, the standard really is what's in the best interest of the child. Now, did they do a bonding study? None of the research shows that they did that. You know, the judge really, I think, ruled, I, I agree with his ruling, but he went with, look, we can't snatch kids from their biological parents. If you have a, a mother who wants to exact revenge on her husband for ditching her while she's pregnant, go ahead and quietly sell his suits. You can't go and sell his kid behind his back. I don't know how they managed to do this without notifying the father. I don't, he was only in South South Carolina. It wasn't like he was an Afghanistan. Well, and is that an argument? Because I want to tell the viewers that the judge has ordered that the child be returned to the biological father within 60 days, Oof. but the adoptive parents say, mm -hmm. oh no, we're going to appeal. We're going, we're taking this all the way up. So is there an argument to be made, Arthur? Because as I read the papers, the baby was born March 1st, 2011. 
The father did not get the information out of the biological mother until June 11. That was the first time she informed him that she had given birth and put the child up for adoption. Now, that's three, four months. Does the adoptive couple have an argument that there was abandonment because the father for three or four months, you know, did nothing to, I, I don't have all the facts about his efforts, but, you know, it's the first time he found out that the baby had been born, that that, that, that was abandonment in some way. I was unable to get my hands on the actual agreement, the adoption agreement between the agency and um, the adoptive parents. Um, that they are going to, you can imagine how desperate these, these parents are. I mean, I'll refer to them as parents, even though they're not the biological parents. They're going to throw every argument in there. Uh, uh, of course, that one. They're, they should, in my opinion, throw the agency under the bus. He was in the service, Megan. How easy was he to find? He's, in, he's a United States officer. I mean, someone just has to pick up the phone, find out where he is, and be like, look, we have this infant here. We're putting her for adoption. We well, need to know that, that you acknowledge. What about that? What about that? Because sometimes you have, you know, biological mothers, in this case, that make very bad decisions. You know, she had no right to do this because she did not have his consent. But that's what the impartial adoption agency is there for, Jana. What, what, what should be the consequences to them? Oh, the, the adoption agency? They should face criminal charges. If you know this is going on, no, seriously. You can't, when you have a parent, whether, whether they lied and said that they notified him and he just didn't answer the petition or whether they actually didn't notify him. Come on, what kind of world do we live in where people can, fathers can uh, have children that we can just snatch from them because we can't find them because they're in the army or doing whatever they're doing? Yeah. That's not intentional abandonment. And obviously he didn't want to abandon the baby because he's got her now. That's the thing. He he just he never consented to give up his child. No. He the judge never consented. The, the people should know the judge wrote a forty-eight page decision, which is not typical. I mean, no. usually judges' decisions are four pages, I not mean, forty-eight this, pages. This would be an even more heart-wrenching case if that adoptive couple had been defrauded into believing that he did give up his rights and wanted to put the child up for adoption. Or sometimes people change their minds. Yeah. That would be truly, truly heart-wrenching. But they had notice that this man never wanted to give up that baby. And when you hear that as an adoptive parent, I mean, that changes everything. And now this poor little girl, uh, who is called Leah by the adoptive parents, uh, will now have a new name, have a new home, you have a new family, and uh, will have a lot to adjust to. And hopefully they will have the right resources in place to help her. Panel, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.